Hello crafters! Maureen here from MadeByMarzipan.com. When you've been scrapbooking for as long as I have, you may feel like there's nothing left that you haven't tried. Well, here's a challenge for you. Try creating a mini album without any paper. I'll show you how with archival quality plastics and transparencies made by graphics. This tutorial was sponsored by graphicsarts.com. I'm using two types of transparency sheets for this. Both are archival quality, making them a good choice for scrapbooks. The first is the type you're probably familiar with, clear and non-adhesive. One side is slightly rough, and that's the side you want to print on. The other kind has a matte finish and a self-adhesive. The finish is very similar to vellum. When you take it off the package, you'll notice that one side has a paper backing. You'll want to print on the opposite side, which is smooth. I've put together a printable PDF of the backgrounds and titles I used for this project. The 7x7 seven seven inch backgrounds are created from a free font made by Emily Lime Designs. I contacted Emily for permission to offer this file to you, so you can print the backgrounds I made, or download this Peony Patterns font from dafont.com and create your own. Change your printer paper setting to transparency if available. Avoid handling the ink portion of the paper until it is fully dry, because it might smear. The wait time for this may vary depending on your printer and the paper type. The matte paper took longer to dry than the clear transparency paper. I'm using pieces of clear craft plastic as my cover. This stiff plastic is also archival quality and will make the album more durable. I want each background to stand out, so I'm varying the size of my pages. The last page is the full 7 by 7 inches but each previous page is one inch shorter than the one before it. A paper cutter helps you achieve straight edges and precise measurements. Layer the album together, aligning at the left side. Pick up the stack and punch two holes on the left of the album. Make sure that both holes go through all layers. I'm using a crocodile for this, which is a strong hole punch. Add binder clips or key rings to secure your pages. Cut out your photos and text. Peel the paper backing off the self-adhesive matte paper. If you've worked with clear plastic or transparencies while scrapbooking, you know the trickiest part is trying to hide the adhesive. It always shows through. That's why I love the self-adhesive backing on these sheets. Add the titles, text, and photos to your album. To avoid unnecessary fingerprints on your photos, flip to the back of the page and rub gently from that side to adhere well. As you place photos, text, and titles, think carefully about the placement of each. What will show through from the front of the album? From the previous pages and the following ones? A clear album must be designed as a whole and not as individual pages. Flip back and forth frequently to take stock of the overall effect. Rub-ons look fantastic with clear albums. I'm using a random assortment for my stash, all left over from other projects. Again, note how the placement of each image affects the overall composition of the album. If you've never used rub-ons before, 
it's easy to do. Just cut out the image you want and remove the waxy backing. Burnish the image with a stick to adhere it and you remove the plastic very slowly to be sure that all pieces of the image have adhered. If they haven't, lay the paper back down and rub again in that spot. Be aware that some types of rub-ons are colored front and back, while others have a white back. For a clear album, rub-ons that are colored on both sides are best. That's all it takes to create a paperless album that's unique and modern. For more information about the products I used, visit graphicsarts.com. For hundreds more crafting tutorials, please visit my website, madebymarzipan.com.